Hey everyone, welcome to That's Good Denver. I'm your host, Chris Romeo. And today I'll be resuming the series of the NFL divisions. And last but not least, definitely not least, I'll be concluding with the AFC West, the division you've all been waiting for. The Chargers, your Denver Broncos, the Chiefs, and the Raiders. So, buckle up everybody. This is by far... The best division in the NFL this year, I think. This is maybe the best division in NFL history. This division is going to be insane. All four of these teams are very good and can, can make very deep playoff runs. All four of these teams could definitely make it to the playoffs. It's mathematically possible, and it could definitely happen. All four of these teams have had a bunch of hype around them all se- off season as the off season's concluding. Barring no injuries. All four of these teams have great quarterbacks. Not great, but like pretty good quarterbacks. So, yeah. And to hype you guys up more, the Denver Broncos are in that division. Oh, and they're going to be pretty good this year. (laughs) Um, But yeah, uh, by the way, I'm doing this at 2 in the morning uh, in my car. I don't want to wake up my grandma, you know. And yeah, so let's get started. I mean... um, before I happen to it, yeah, this is a really good division. I saved the best division for the last out of all the divisions. And, uh, yeah, let's get rolling. So, yeah, just like I did last time, I'll speculate each team's ceiling and each team's floor, and then I'll predict them out at the end with their schedule. So starting up in this off in this crazy AFC West, you got the L.A. Chargers. So the Chargers, you know, they were pretty solid last year. They were, um, you know, a tie or a win, which almost happened against the Raiders from making to the playoffs last year and could have been a viable threat. But they lost the Ra- to the Raiders and finished 9-8. and eight. Um, I mean, the Chargers are, I think they're the best. They they're might be the best all-around team in this division. I mean, Justin Herbert's, like, coming in his third year. He's a great quarterback, young quarterback. They got loaded talent on offense. Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams is a good deep ball threat. Some other good weapons. And that defense. Wow. I mean, like they got Joey Bosa adding Khalil Mack. JC Jackson, I think, in the secondary is really good for them. I mean, I I it would not surprise me at all if they win this division. I think they I I might have them win this division. I'm not sure, but I mean, this team could definitely even win the Super Bowl, for all I know. I would not be that surprised if they won the Super Bowl. This team's ceiling, if, you know, uh, they, you know, are living up to the hype and team, everybody's expectations, I could see them going 13-4, and four, getting that number one seed, and, you know, making a run for the Super Bowl, like I said. Um, their floor, um, you know, if things don't go as way, and, you know, like, they kind of choke things away like they have been the past couple years. I have their floor being no lower than ten and seven. You know, uh, that could, that still honestly might definitely make it, get them in the playoffs. I mean, it'd be hard in the loaded AFC, a loaded AFC. Ten and seven wouldn't win them this this division. I don't think. Um, but they could still make it to the playoffs. Um, you'll have to see. Then next up. Oh yeah, all the hype this off season. It's been six and a half years. Wait, hold on. Very often, in all my other videos, but you know how big of a Denver fan I am and a big Broncos fan. After six and a half years of misery, not having a quarterback ever since Super Bowl Fifty win against the Panthers, the Broncos have been through like ten quarterbacks. They finally found their guy, and dangerous. Russell Wilson, yes. Russell Wilson, baby. He has come to the Denver Broncos. He has been at training camp working so hard with this loaded team. They have the talent around him. Some people think that we might win the Super Bowl this year. I'm not, like, that crazy, but I think we'll be pretty dang good and be fighting for the playoffs. Anyway, don't want to spoil it yet. So, yeah, the Broncos, you know, they've been... Uh, your 2022 Broncos have been uh, 
you know, lacking a quarterback for quite some time now, ever since Peyton Manning won the Super Bowl with us. And, you know, they've had the all-around good pieces. And, like, you know, they in 2017, they had the, one of the worst records in the league. They built their defense. They, you know, add some good pieces on offense. You know, as looking at the team right now, they have everything on defense almost. They have Justin Simmons, one of the best safeties in the league. Patrick, Patrick, Patrick I can't talk. Pat Sertan, uh, second year corner. He he was had an awesome season last year. He should even be better this year. Uh, they got Bradley Chubb if he can stay healthy. Adding Randy Gregory, um, you know, like Draymond Jones and uh Ronald Darby in the secondary. The list goes on on the defense. Um, then on the offense, you know, uh, other than adding Russell Wilson, which is that key piece you need. Um, they have Jerry Judy, who has a lot of potential, Co- Cortland Sutton, Tim Patrick, who's the best receiver, who's very under- underrated, Albert O at tight end. I think the Broncos, not to be biased, I don't think it's biased, but I think the Broncos have the best running back duo in this division, in this tough division, with Javante Williams in his second year, breaking tackles, already at 1,000 yards his rookie season, and with Melvin Gordon, you know, he fumbles the ball a lot, but, you know, he's a good second piece to have, you know, if Javante Williams needs a rest. So this team should be, you know, pretty dang good, I think. Um, th- this team ceiling, I have it as the same as the Chargers, you know, if Russ comes in cooking, you know, with Nathaniel Hackett in that offense, and, you know, I can see them going 13-4, and four, possibly getting a number one or number two seed and make a run at that Super Bowl. Um... You know, but this team's floor, you got to realize, you know, this team is very new together. You know, Nathaniel Hackett in his first year um, and Russell Wilson, Wilson was the first year. You know, the, the chemistry could be off, you know. Doesn't mean they still can't win a bunch of games and be really good. Their floor, if that happens, I have their floor being 9-8. and eight. I don't see them finishing any lower, you know, especially for all the hype they have around them this season. And, you know, for how good everyone thinks they can be. Nine and eight could still get them in the playoffs. It would be hard in the AFC, but could still happen. Um, wouldn't win the win them the vi- the division, obviously. But you know, if they go any lower than nine and eight, the Broncos do this year. I don't know what to say, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think you know they should be good. Then next up, you got the Kansas City Chiefs. So the Chiefs losing Tyree Kill is a huge loss for them. Um, you know, they still have Patrick Mahomes. They still have other good wide receivers. They added Juju Smith, Schuster, who's pretty decent. Um, they have Scanley, Mardell, whatever, however you say his name, Marvis Scanley, uh, Travis Kelsey, who's like the best tight end in the league. Um, and they have a de- a few decent running backs. And, you know, their defense is soft, I think. Uh, I mean, they lost Tyron Matthew, and, you know, they have the worst defense in this division, not to be mean, but, like, the Chiefs, I mean, they've been one of the best teams in the AFC of, you know, in a, for a really long time. Um, and their ceiling, I have their ceiling honestly being as high as the Chargers and Broncos, 13-4. and four, You know, that's if Tyreek Hill, you know, leaving does not hurt them hardly at all. Um, and, you know, Patrick Mahomes just plays the same. Their floor, though, um, I have their floor being 10-7. and seven. Um you know, that's if, you know, Tyree Kill hurts a lot and, you know, the Chiefs kind of have a down year, which could could maybe happen. I don't know if it will quite happen, but 10-7, and seven, that could still definitely get him the playoffs. Probably would because it's the Chiefs. Uh, wouldn't quite win the, win the division, though. Um, and, yeah, the, Chief, the Chiefs, Chargers, and Broncos are... I, I don't know who's going to win that win the division between those three teams. Um, th- those three teams could definitely win this division. But a team that I don't think is going to win the division, but I think they could make it to the playoffs, is next up the Raiders. Um, you know, I hope they don't do that well because I'm not a big fan, but, you know, uh, you know, I I don't know what to say. Um, but the Raiders, you know, they surprised a lot of people by getting in the playoffs last year at 10-7. and seven. You know, their season looked like it was going to collapse at the end, but they suddenly turned things around. Derek Carr played pretty dang good. Their offense was pretty good, and... You know, he should be pretty decent this year, and adding Devontae Adams is going to help him a lot. You know, they played together at college, and 
Their offense should be really good with Josh Jacobs in the backfield and Darren Waller at tight end. Um, their defense shouldn't be that bad, I don't think, with Max Crosby adding Chandler Jones, but I'm not a fan of their secondary. I don't think their secondary is very good. I mean, um, they have a better defense than the Chiefs probably but with Mac, Max Crosby and Chandler Jones, but their defense is going to hold them back a lot. Their offense could be just as good as any of these teams in the division possibly, but their defense is what I think is going to hold them back. But their ceiling, you know, if their defense isn't that bad as I think, and like, you know, uh, Derek Carr and De Devontae Adams, you know, they'll probably click right away. I have their ceiling being 11-6. and six. Um, I don't – I still don't think that would win them the division – um, but 11 and six would, uh, if it doesn't get them in the playoffs, it would be pretty dang close, but I think that would get them in the playoffs. Um, their floor though, you know, if the Derek Carr and Devonte Adams connection doesn't click exactly right away and their defense is what I think it is, maybe even worse. I have their floor being eight and nine. I mean, wouldn't be terrible, but like, you know, you gotta also think about the rest of this division. I think the Raiders are on the outside looking in. Um, and this is a loaded division, you know, like, doesn't mean I think the Raiders are bad or anything, you know, it's just the division, you know, that, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, if I were to actually predict it here on my computer, so I have the predictions over here. Or predict it. I have the Chargers winning this division at 12 and 5. Uh, just getting over the Broncos, who I also have 12 and 5, getting in the playoffs, though. Um, I think they're going to be a playoff team, not quite a Super Bowl team, but two or three years down the road when Russell Wilson develops some chem chemistry with that young talent. They're going to eventually win a Super Bowl before he retires, I think. The Chargers at 12 and 5, you know. I think they're in the same boat. They could win the Super Bowl, but I just don't think they're quite there yet. And the Chiefs at eleven and six. Um, they have like the one of the the fifth toughest to schedule in football. So, and you know, everybody in the division got got better, and you know they didn't really necessarily. So I still think they'll make it to the playoffs at eleven and six, though. Then I have the Raiders going ten and seven. Um, you know, that's borderline playoffs, but, you know, it looks like I don't have them making the playoffs just behind the Ravens and the Dolphins. Uh, but, you know, it'd still be pretty close, and 10-7, ten, ten and seven, you know, isn't a bad record at all. Uh, it'd be the same as last year. And so, you know, starting off with the Chargers schedule, you know, I have them with their tough, tough schedule, you know, I have them beating... Beating the Raiders, uh, losing the Chiefs. Then I have them going on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 game winning streak until they fall to Vegas on the road, get upset to the Dolphins, then win two in a row, then lose their final two. Um, that gets them to 12 and 5, still hangs on for a division title for them. Um, and I also have each team beating each other once, 3 and 3 across the way in this division. Then your 2022 Denver Broncos. Hopefully we can actually do this and get this done. But I have them starting 3-0 right off the back, getting two easy wins uh, against the Seahawks and Texans. Uh, I mean, Texans will be easy, but Seahawks uh, might be a little tough, I guess. Getting a big win against the 49ers at home. Losing on the road to Vegas. Bouncing back against the Colts. And losing a tough, really tough game against the Chargers. Um... Winning two easy ones in a row, then winning on the road in Tennessee, I might go to that game. Uh, spoiler alert. Then I have them winning against uh, your rivals uh, at home, get the Raiders uh, getting a win against the Panthers, then ending that uh, losing streak, winning streak to the Ravens. So after the Chargers loss, I have them winning five games in a row. Um, then after the Ravens game, I have them winning two home games in a row, getting that losing streak and ending against the Chiefs, losing two really tough road games in a row, and then uh, finishing strong against the Chargers at home, getting a huge win to get them punch their ticket to the playoffs, hopefully 
for the first time since 2015. Then the Kansas City Chiefs, the kings of this division over the past six years. Um, out of them getting two big wins, two tough big wins to start the season until they fall the Colts, Buccaneers on the road. Then I have them winning three hard games in a row, actually four hard games in a row. Um, then they beat the Jaguars. Uh, so go on a five-game winning streak until they lose two, two really tough games in a row. Get the revenge against the Bengals from last year. Lose your Denver Broncos. Win three in a row. Then lose on the road to the Vegas Raiders. And one thing to say about this game is, you know, I mean, I'm getting a little off track, but I think, uh, you know, never mind. I'll actually explain it after uh, I predict the Raiders' schedule um, and go go over their schedule. So I have them losing. Uh, Week one of the Chargers, bouncing back in against the Cardinals, losing to the Titans, beating Denver, um, losing on the road to KC, beating the Texans, lo- up getting upset to the Saints, then went, finally getting a winning streak, go to five and four, uh, losing to the Broncos, uh, winning two in a row, uh, lose a tough game to the Rams, win one, lose one, then win their final two to finish ten and seven, so. Uh, but this Chiefs KC game, so as you can see, I have uh this division, everybody in this division going three and three. Like, I don't see why the Chargers don't split with the Broncos. I don't see why the Broncos don't div- split with the Raiders. And I think the Broncos will end their losing streak against the Chiefs this year. So that would make them go three and three. Um then the the chargers um i think it's i think it's fair to say they'll split with the chiefs both those teams are so good and you know uh they have like the best odds to win this division the chargers and chiefs you know and i i think it's fair to say they split with the raiders too i don't see a sweep either way um and then with the chiefs and raiders you know I see everyone in this division splitting, except the Chiefs and Raiders matchup. I don't think the Raiders would sweep them. I think the Chiefs at least win one. I would not be surprised if the Chiefs win this final game and sweep the Raiders, and that would win them the division, as you can see. If I had the Chiefs winning that game, that would win them the division, get the number two seed. Uh, L.A. and Denver would still get in, but I don't see the... I think the Raiders split with them, and that's how it split across the way, and that's how I have it. Chargers 12 and five, your Broncos getting in at 12 and five, getting the number five seed, and Chiefs finishing 11 and six, and the Raiders finishing last. But that doesn't mean they'll be bad. They just have a really tough division, I guess. They do. They do. But that is it, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this that series of the prediction for each division for the NFL season. It's getting late and you know you know i hope uh that that gets me and you know other football fans excited for this season definitely gets me excited for this bronco season coming up and yeah hopefully uh i'm right if if not better on the broncos prediction but um yeah and with baseball i mean you know i've been keeping up but like the rockies you know they're up and down and stuff you know they're starting to fall out of the playoff race uh and this might be the last video i record before because i'm going to arizona this friday to see my friend brook and brooks and jack um in arizona we might even go to a rockies d-backs game but we'll see um but yeah uh and then since the series of the divisions are, are over um and i'll be starting school back up in a couple weeks there'll be be hard my junior year at Bethel, but, um, I'm going to do a playoff prediction thing, um, going off these divisions, predicted each division now, um, each division from the AFC, I predicted each division from the NFC, and I'll do a playoff, a thing, um, to where, uh, like, it predicted for the playoffs, going off of this, but I'm off right now, I'm just like tired, and my, my I'm starting to stutter over my words, but yeah, football he- season's here, baby, let's go Broncos, I think they should get in the playoffs this year, maybe not Super Bowl, but hopefully they go to the Super Bowl and win it, 
But that's it, everybody. I'm Chris Romeo, and that's good, ne that's good Denver. <laughs> good night, everyone.